Hi, how's your dog doing? It's been a while since I've talked about philosophy or Rome on my channel. Over a year, in fact. So, I decided to combine these two interests and talk about some Roman philosophers you should know about. You probably know about plenty of Greek philosophers and European philosophers since, but most people seem to just forget about Roman philosophy. So, let's talk about it. I'll provide some basic summaries for their lives, some of their works, and their important points and ideas. My only criteria for this is that all of these philosophers had to have had written works that are translated into English and you can obtain legally. Why am I doing seven? Because seven seems to be Rome's lucky number. There are seven hills and seven kings of Rome, so why not do seven? The list is in no particular order. All right, let's talk about some ancient dead people who thought a lot. Cicero. While he may be more well known for his political career making way too many speeches about Catiline, Cicero is notable as a philosopher. He introduced some Greek schools of philosophy to the Romans. He also introduced some philosophical vocabulary into Latin which didn't exist previously. Cicero's school of philosophy is sort of a mix of academic skepticism and stoicism, keeping the virtues of stoicism and the doubt of skepticism. Academic skepticism was mostly about how we can't really comprehend anything, but that ideas we have can possess a degree of likeness to the truth. They also attack the Stoics quite a bit. Cicero also wrote Academia, which is about the series of debates between the Stoics and the Skeptics, where a lot of our knowledge on academic skepticism comes from. Cicero has tons of works, so I'm sure you'll be able to find one of them somewhere. Plotinus. Plotinus? Plotinus, or Plotinus, is regarded as the founder of Neoplatonism. Neoplatonism is confusing because it's not based on a set of ideas, but rather a chain of thinkers. However, there are some ideas that all Neoplatonists share, such as the idea of the One, a substance that creates the universe and is the finality of all things. The One emanates all things in the universe, and the ultimate aim of human life is to attain perfection. If you attain perfection, you get to go to a higher realm, returning to the One. If you were impure, you get reincarnated as a human or an animal. Plotinus's most well-known work is the Enneads, which covers the One, Nous, which can be described as intellect or a good sense, and the soul. Plotinus's ideas have influenced many religious ideas over the centuries as well. Seneca. Seneca was a Stoic philosopher. He served as an advisor to Nero before Nero told him to commit suicide as punishment for a plot to assassinate Nero that Seneca was supposedly involved in. One of the things Seneca talked about most was how there is no good or bad in the world other than virtues and vices. We make everything else good or bad. Seneca saw the mind as being rational but doing irrational things through incorrect reasoning. Emotions were one such result of this incorrect reasoning. Seneca also emphasized that life is not short, but that we waste time on things and then say life is short. We have enough time, but we squander it by not doing what's important and wasting time, something that I think is very easy to do nowadays with all the technology we have. It's a great tool, but it should be used wisely. That's probably one thing Seneca would mention about the modern world, but that's just what I think. Seneca has quite a few works. He has many plays including Hercules Furens, The Mad Hercules, and Medea. His most famous philosophical works would probably be Epistolae Morales ad Lucilium, Moral Letters to Lucilius, and which are also called Letters from a Stoic or Moral Epistles. Another well-known work of his is De Brevitate Vitae, On the Shortness of Life, De Otio, On Leisure, De Ira, On Anger, and many others. Lucretius. Lucretius is probably the person I can talk the least about here. All we know is that he was probably born in the 90s BC and died in the 50s BC, but we barely even know that. The only evidence we have for this is from the Christian writer Jerome, who would have lived four centuries after Lucretius. Anyway, the only philosophical work of his that we know of is De Rerum Natura on the nature of things. It's a poem which explains Epicurean philosophy to which Lucretius belonged. It covers atomism, the nature of the mind, soul, sensation, and thought. It explains many natural phenomena and describes the universe operating according to physical principles that are not caused by the Roman gods, but by fortuna, luck, or chance. Essentially, Lucretius was a naturalist who believed that the gods existed, but didn't have anything to do with the world and didn't create the universe like Epicurus, the founder of Epicureanism. The book is pretty much dedicated to explaining natural phenomena rather than the other tenets of Epicureanism, like unhappiness coming from misfortunes in life and fear of future states, such as death, and teaching his followers to remove these fears. De Rerum Natura was also an influence on Augustan poets like Virgil and Horace, if you like any of their works. Boethus. I don't even know if I can say Boethus is Roman because he was born after Odoacer took over, but I'll still count him. Boethus is our last Neoplatonist on the list. Boethus's only well-known work is De Consolatione Philosophiae, On the Consolation of Philosophy. It was written while he was imprisoned by Theodoric, the Ostrogothic king. The book is written as a dialogue between him and philosophy, personified as a woman. Philosophy explains the nature of fate, the divine source of wisdom, good and evil, and chance. The book is, in a way, a fusion of Neoplatonism and Christianity. While nothing is explicitly stated about Christianity, Boethus was a Christian and it covers many theological topics as well as the problem of evil and free will. Epictetus. 
Now, if you're interested in philosophy, you've probably heard of Epictetus before. A Stoic philosopher, he was born as a slave and then freed. He studied under Musonius Rufus and began giving his own lectures. Now, it's a bit of a stretch to say that Epictetus had any writings. His student Arian did all the writing. The two books that Epictetus is most known for are Discourses and Enchiridion. Discourses is pretty much just a compilation of Arian's lecture notes. Enchiridion is a handbook indicated by the title, which means in the hand. Enchiridion compiles practical philosophical advice and doesn't talk about any sort of metaphysical teachings. This is in line with Epictetus, who believed that philosophy is more so a way of living than theoretical things that someone decides to write about. The most important thing to Epictetus is the separation of external events, which are outside of our control, and internal actions, which we do control, calling it the chief task in life. This is so that one can focus more on what they control than worrying about things they can't change or do anything about, like dying. It's so that you don't waste your time and you can devote your efforts to things you can actually change, such as your actions and thoughts. Epictetus says that you should accept what happens outside of your control calmly. On the other hand, he says that we should examine and control our own actions through discipline and reason. Epictetus was also a major influence on our last philosopher, Marcus Aurelius. Even if you don't like philosophy and you're just here because it's related to Rome, you know about Marcus Aurelius. He was one of Rome's best emperors, the second best in my opinion. Marcus Aurelius is also my second favorite philosopher and the author of my second favorite book, which is his only known work, Meditations. Meditations was just his journal, and he never intended to publish it. Of the three Stoics I have mentioned in this video, Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, Marcus focused a lot on improving himself, talked about living according to nature a lot, and having good thoughts and right action. Seneca focused on the rationality of the mind the most, Epictetus divided between between the external and internal worlds, and Marcus Aurelius focused on living correctly. All three focus on living correctly, but Marcus started from the assumption that he knows what it takes to do that and focuses more on implementing it correctly. Marcus also focuses on doing your part in the world and looking at things from a larger perspective. He also emphasizes the logos, or reason of the universe, and to live with it. He also advocates to rid himself of wrong perceptions of good and evil, for example, thinking that fame is good. He says that things like that are neither good nor bad. I recommend reading Meditations first if you want to get into Stoicism or maybe Enchiridion. They're the most straightforward and don't have any references to things you need context for, like discourses. All right, those are our seven Roman philosophers. I recommend that you read these books if you can because they're pretty good. I am a little biased, but I recommend that you read the Stoic books for sure, but it's up to you what you want to read. Maybe do some more research on your own to learn more about what they thought. There are a lot of people involved in the Western philosophical tradition stretching back about 2,500 years. That doesn't even include Eastern philosophy or philosophical traditions of other cultures. So there are bound to be some areas that are forgotten about, like Roman philosophy. Hopefully you learn more about these philosophers as they all have ideas that contribute to this tradition. Honestly, just study philosophy any way you can. It's one part of a lifelong pursuit of knowledge and understanding inherent to humans. Anyway, tell your like I said hi. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun looking at some interesting thinkers. There are many more Rowan philosophers I could cover, but some of them don't have written works that are easily accessible, so I decided to leave them out. Others, like Cato the Younger, had no works written, so it'd be difficult to say exactly what they believed. Anyway, maybe I could talk about philosophers from other schools of thought someday. I have some ideas as to what the next video could be, but I'm not entirely sure. Alright, that's all.